Um, I've been to a number of these MAPI hours as a listener before. So I know that um, there's always so much different knowledge in this Zoom room. And I will say upfront that I am not an expert in this, but I am coming from it from a truly using OSM as a database and thinking about what we can do with that because my um, job is being a geospatial librarian. And so I just kind of wanted to share that perspective and then maybe bring in um, some kind of really quick from a ground level, what does the syntax mean sort of perspective. And I think um, I've, I have a lot to learn from a lot of people in this room. So I hope we have some good discussions as well. So um, I will go ahead and start sharing my screen. And I have a little um, slideshow to um, share. And mostly I want to talk about OS OpenStreetMap as a database. And this is all thanks to the overpass API that Roland has created. And I want to emphasize that it is this one individual um, thing that all of our, our um, queries hit, and it works really, really hard. And so we want to keep in mind that when we use Overpass Turbo or some of the other tools um, to try and, and keep it to a minimum or what we really need. So that's just something that I wanted to point out and we'll um, talk about some of the, the settings that we can do in these queries. So like I said, I work at a library in Denver, Colorado, and it serves three different institutions, um, University of Colorado, Denver, Metropolitan State University, Denver, and Denver Community College. So again, my perspective in um, this is how do we help researchers do things? How do we get data? And a lot of times just pointing them to OpenStreetMap is really a great thing. So I just a quick overview of what I want to talk about tonight is Thinking about the OSM data structure, I think a lot of people here already know this, but I'll go over it real quickly because it's really important to think about that. And then how does the query language in um, Overpass QL or in Overpass Turbo work? And so again, I mentioned Overpass API, that's what we're hitting when we use these queries. And I'll go into the query syntax a little bit um, there is the wizard that people were mentioning in their introductions that is so helpful. And then there is the overpass query language. And that is um, replacing this XML language that you will also see in other applications. So the syntaxes can change a little bit. And then I want to um, kind of go through some quick demos of three different tools that employ the overpass API. And that is Overpass Turbo, but I also want to touch on, like Keith mentioned, QGIS has a plugin that uses it. And then there is also an OSM query for ArcGIS. So anybody that is working um, in research at universities and students are used to using these other tools, there's this quick way to go into OpenStreetMap data through these avenues. So what I really want to think about is what can we do with data and think about how what OpenStreetMap is and allowing people to map what is around them, how ha, creating that data or being able to extract it and use it empowers people's community. So there has been a lot of conversation about how to involve um, different people in OpenStreetMap community and I think having that perspective of what can this data do to help is really important. And so I'd like people to think about this and maybe in the conversation we can come up with different ideas. But one example I want to share is that I had a student who was very curious about aged people being able to get to the grocery store and their accessibility to food. And she was very much concerned about people that walked to get there. And so she had um, this 
grocery store data from our Denver open data portal. But what she was really interested in was where were park benches so that people could sit and rest on their way to the store. So she was trying to find a data layer for park benches. And even though this, the park maintenance people probably had it, it wasn't publicly available. So she had found the um, grocery store from Denver Open Data, but then being able to go into OSM and pull bench data helped with her analysis of routes and just kind of understanding what needed to be done in her community to help people be able to get to the store easily. It can be as simple as that. So that's just kind of the idea that I wanted to put forward before we dive into this to just kind of think about this is what we're doing is we are putting data out there for people to solve these real problems in our communities. So OSM data, and these are um, some images that are off the OSM wiki, which is amazing. Go in there. There's answers to all of your questions, but I'm going to try and sum up some things. If we're used to thinking about points, lines, and polygons in a lot of other kinds of geospatial data formats, OSM data comes in nodes, and then nodes related together to make a way, and those can be a closed way or a um, solid closed way to be that polygon. So it's a slightly different structure. And this is really important to think about when we're using the queries from overpass because knowing how nodes make up ways and then a bunch of ways can be put together um, for a relation. So let's say there's a whole bunch of different bus routes, but then we want a whole system of where does the bus service in Denver, what does their whole relation, their coverage area look like? And that could be a relation that is all of those ways, but it also has all of those nodes, nodes in there. So it's this nested data structure with these things called relations that point back and forth to each other. So another thing that's really important, and this is very um, needed in trying to figure out how to extract data from OpenStreetMap to be able to use in research projects is what are tags? So each of these nodes or ways has keys and values. And what that means is each one of them has these labels that we can say, okay, this is a building, which is a very popular um, key. And then that value has a lot of different um, things that can be entered depending on the knowledge of the person that's creating the map data. So building yes is the default, but it could also be building house and a lot of other things. And having the knowledge of these tags, these key value pairs, really helps you pull information out of, um, out of OpenStreetMap. And so I want to go really quickly to tag info openstreetmap.org and just show people that that is a um, really good thing to look for if you're trying to get familiar with what can be pulled from the data. So here are a lot of keys. And like I said, building is one. I can click on this. And then it's going to give me an example picture of what a building is. But it can also give me this tab of all of the different values that it can take. And so this can help me when I'm trying to build my queries. If I want a better sense of what these actually are, I can also go to the wiki, like I mentioned. There are all sorts of things that you can click on and go um, to these more definitive wiki pages that have a lot of information about what these objects actually are that can help you figure out the kind of data that you're pulling. So after um, getting a good sense of what keys and values are, then we can start diving into some of the query syntax. And so I'm just gonna touch a little bit on the differences between 
what we see in um, the wizard that we can put in in the front end. And I'm going to demo these things so that you can see it in action. And then look at the query language and also um, real briefly for reasons I'll explain what the XML syntax looks like as well. So I want to start talking about what the query, the um, overpass query language is built like, because that's the one that is um, the most succinct and getting a sense of it will help you do things more quickly. It looks like gobbledygook when um, you first look at it, but going back to what our data structures are, one thing to know about is being able to call that particular data structure. So I can say, I'm looking for nodes, or I'm looking for a way, or I'm looking for a relation. There are also other shorthands for um, NWR can say, I'm looking for a node, way, and relation all at once. And then you have a clause that um, filters, that can filter that for you. This is optional. You don't have to do that. You can look for all the nodes in a bounding box if you want. But the, the clause with the key value pairs is where um, you can get a lot of power in extracting the data that you would like. So a full query then would be saying, I want to look for a node with the key name equaling Berlin. So that's pretty simple, but there's a lot of things that are hidden there. And I want to um, point to that because it speaks to how the query languages work. So there are, when you do this query, it writes this data into a set or a default set, which is symbolized by just this underscore down here at the bottom, this phrase that's node name equals Berlin and then has a dash and um, a greater than sign to a point underscore. This phrase right here is exactly means the same as this full query up above. But I'm just explicitly writing out that it is writing this data to a default set. The reason why that's important is that the query always holds that default set just in that single command. And when it passes a semicolon, it moves to the next thing. So you can dump or lose this information if you don't do a various number of things. And one of those could be naming your own set, your own set. So that's that's something to think about. And we'll we'll see some of um, this in action when we go through some little demos as well. So these are um, specific ways that you can work with those clauses that can help you pull out the key value pairs. And so if I use just the first one, and I'm just saying, if I am looking at a map area and I see a whole bunch of data on OpenStreetMap, but all I really want are the buildings, then I can just put building in here and then I get all of the building information back. Or if I want everything but the buildings, then I can use that exclamation mark to negate I want everything but building or whatever that key value is. Or I can um, specify exactly what I want. Or again, I can say I want buildings where everything um, is not yes. I, I want to see where people have labeled it as house or commercial store, other kinds of things like that. So that's what um, those next two are doing. Now, the last ones, I have to admit that I know very, very little about um, regular expressions. But the tilde indicates that instead of putting yes for building equals yes, that you could put a regular expression there. And what that is doing is that it's looking for a very specific pattern instead of um, just the string. So for an example of where you might use regular expression is if you're looking for a blank space 
you can't put in quote blank space quote and have it work. You have to use this thing called a regular expression. Um, the the one for blank space is a caret dollar sign. So you would have to put that expression in there to look for that blank space. But there are um, lookup tables for understanding what all of these are. So again, the um, exclamation marks are saying, mm, I, I want to look for everything but this, but the regular expressions um, can be put in for both keys and values. And then the last one um, just has to do with not having a capitalization particularity for that last um, value. So that's the um, Q overpass QL language. And I just wanted to show really quickly what it looks like in when you're working with these three different ones that I mentioned as you're typing things in. So the first one is the wizard with overpass turbo. And the example that I'm looking for here is just looking for kind of back to our benches for helping, helping the people along the way to the grocery store is nodes that have marked a, a bench. And so if I'm in the wizard in overpass turbo, all I have to type is amenity, which is the key, equals bench, and type node. And then this gets automatically constrained to the map view. And I just wanted to put that in there because the other two examples also have bounding boxes. So the overpass QL version of this is going to be node, key value of amenity equals bench, and it's constraining it to this bounding box that I'm seeing in my canvas extent, and then it has the output. It also um, has these settings at the top that says, I want the um, data written in a JSON file. And I also don't want this query to get hung up. So I'm gonna put a time limit on it of 25 seconds. And so this is being polite to um, the overpass API, right? If you start building massive, massive queries, you can put timeouts that are reasonable to the kind of data that you're trying to get. And you can also put max size settings so that you can constrain the amount of data that you're getting in one query as well. So this overpass XML one is a same query as the one above, but this is one that I um, pulled out of QGIS. So it has output to XML because it doesn't work well with JSON to be able to um, convert from its its settings into a, what, what overpass API provides so that it doesn't work with JSON, but it still has that timeout. And the query type node is written in a separate line and then has the key values is written um, this way in the XML script and then the bounding box. So overpass QL is really just kind of a nice compression of XML, but you'll be seeing um, both types of syntaxes and different things that we're doing. So the bounding box, I just wanted to give one more example before we dive into some demos. So in XML, you would very declare the east, north, south, west for what you wanted it to be. And it would default to um, just grabbing all of the nodes in that bounding box. If you wanted it to grab the ways, then um, you would put that in with type equals way. For overpass QL, these the exact same um, queries are shown. And there's a very specific order to the um, latitudes and longitudes that you put in. So it goes minimum latitude, minimum longitude, maximum latitude, maximum longitude. So south, west, east, north. So that order is very important, but it makes it um, a very simplistic way to um, enter this into the code. So there is so much more about um, 
this language and the wiki for the overpass ql is a really good thing to kind of look through and and get a sense of what some of these things are and so we'll be seeing things like unions and how to do re recursive um, things where we drill up and down between the ways and the nodes, like the, that thing I was talking about, the nested data structure. So some of this stuff that we see, we'll, we'll talk about, but if you wanna read through it more carefully, this um, URL is a really good one. So with that, um, the first thing I want to poke around at is Overpass Turbo itself. So I am going to go to an instance of that. And when you go to Overpass Turbo, and the URL is just overpass-turbo.eu, when you first get um, into it, it looks like this. And I, I believe this is actually the default load. It ends up on the Colosseum in Rome with an example loaded of a very simple query. So you can go back and click on load and see these examples. This one is their drinking water. So you can click on different ones and see them change and just see some examples here. And so when you click run on any query in Overpass Turbo, the result gets mapped out and you can go and click on the individual results and see the tags and the information about that data. And the other thing that's really absolutely marvelous about it is you can go over here to export and say, I want to bring this data set out as a GeoJSON. And then I can you can put it in your research project, use it for you know whatever you're doing. So the wizard is right here. And this is a really good way to dive into understanding how this works. So I had mentioned that um, when we're looking for benches, all I had to do was type in amenity equals bench. And if I leave it like that, it's going to be um, a little bit more of a complicated query than I had shown before. So I'm gonna click build query. And you'll notice over here that it's got some comments in here so that you can save these. So I can click save and save that query if I want to, if it's one I'm gonna use again. But, and that, so it has these automatically generated comments in it, but here's the um, timeout that gets put in there. And it has node amenity equal bench and it's doing the bounding box because I said it automatically just kind of does it for this map extent that we're looking at. But it also is going to automatically look for ways and relations as well, anything, because it, it wants to look at all of the data. Now, if it didn't have this set of parentheses right here, what would happen if I took those out and I ran this is I would run the node query and then and then write it to that default set. And then I would run the way query and it would dump the default set and write this new one. And then the relation one. So what this parentheses does is it unions all of that information and then writes it to one default set. And then another thing that you notice, which is a little weird down here, and this is the, um, recursion symbol where it is taking everything from all of the relations um, nodes and ways and going down and pulling out all of the nodes that are in the um, ways that it finds as well. So this is a recursive down shorthand symbol that works with that nested data and makes sure that we get everything that we're 
potentially looking for. Sometimes we get too much than we're looking for. And that's why understanding how these things work is um, it's good to kind of take a look into that. So this is looking for all of the benches. I'm going to close that drinking water one that kind of hangs out up there. Um, and so now I can go in here and see that I'm looking for benches. And sometimes they have more information, like does this one have a backrest? No, it actually has the color interest in there too. So there's all this information that can end up in um, your GeoJSON that you export and kind of use in other spaces as well. So if I want to just limit it to nodes and I'm not um, looking for ways that I do this, it's going to just make that um, query a little bit shorter and just look for the nodes. So that's maybe all you need if you know that that's the kind of data that you're looking for. But it's really interesting when you're thinking about how do people map a certain area? Do they, do they draw a polygon of, that symbolizes something or not? Or is it really something that should only have a node and trying to construct your queries in relation to that? So I want to show really quickly um, two other ways to work with the Overpass API. And we can go into more um, questions about some of these um, syntax things, but I just wanted to show how they um, look a little bit differently. So this is QGIS and I have it in exactly the same place. But if I go to um, QGIS and look at the plugins list, there is one called Quick OSM that if I add that to my um, GIS system, and so a lot of students that are doing research projects either have something like this or ArcGIS that they might be working with. And so I want to go up to my um, plugin for QGIS, which will be for Quick OSM, which shows up under the vector menu. And when I open that, it also has a bit of a um, quick query wizard as well. So you have to know the key values. Again, tag info is great. But if I say um, I want to look for those benches again, then I can um, pick that. It's going to ask me where to look. So I can say canvas extent. Again, that's what I'm seeing. Or if I've got another layer and I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I've got some bizarre shape that's, um, that's kind of defining my AOI or area of interest, I can pick that. But I'm just going to pick Canvas Extent. And then when I click Show Query, this is where um, it uses the XML query language. And so you can see in here that it's doing a union. That's the same thing as the parentheses from the overpass um, turbo query. And then it's doing the node way and relation built within that union to bring those all into the same set. And then here is the recurse type down. And now that just looks like just this little greater than sign in the, um, in the, um, overpass query language. So same kind of thing. I can come in here and I can work with um, the this wizard within QGIS and run queries here. And the other thing you can put um, to some degree, you can use the um, the QL language within QGIS as well. There's just some places where the it gets a little bit stuck. So I can run this query and it says it was successful. And so now I have this layer of all of those benches around Rome. And apparently some of them also came in a way form as well. So that's interesting, but something to investigate. So the last one that I want to show is actually um, in ArcGIS Pro there is also a way to pull OSM data using Overpass API directly into that. 
And if you go to this particular um, repository um, by Ricardo Klinger, this is the OSM query. And to be able to get this into ArcGIS, you come into this repository and download the whole repository. And then when you have it, it looks like OSM Query Master, and you put it somewhere that you can um, access. And then when you're in ArcGIS Pro, you can come over to the catalog area, say Add Toolbox, and then I would go into that folder. Let's see, it's gonna take me just a little bit to go find there, do to do. It, this is something that you have to do with um, every project that you do. So I can open this and here I'm going to see that um, toolbox and I can add it and then it would add to, um, it's taking a little bit of time, but then it's going to add into here. And then once I do have it, then it opens up a tool that lets me grab OSM data directly into ArcGIS as well. So if I start this tool, it has that same um, piece of doing the key value bit and it's um, pretty, so it's the, the tag and then the tag value and they've put it in a drop down sort of situation I am not going to do a amenity bench for the whole state, but um, I think I am going to do, um, let's see. Well, you get the idea. I don't need to actually show this, but what I do want to um, mention is that they have a drop down list of pre populated ones here that do work. And then when you open them, you can see the query. I think if I do, let's see, let's do railway. This this one I know is um, fast funicular. You would pick um, define a bounding box and you can say current display extent, same thing, and run the query. What I want to mention is that you may have noticed that there was a get OSM data tool that was expert as well. And there you can enter your own queries directly into it. So you're not reliant on the drop downs that they have put in that GitHub repo for this. But this is kind of like a way to keep it simple. So there is one funicular in um, the state of Colorado and it's across the Royal Gorge. So that was the result and it has, you know, the endpoints of it and um, the, the middle part as well. So that was the overpass turbo is a good way to pull out OSM data. There is also the um, quick OSM plugin for QGIS. And there is also um, the OSM query for ArcGIS, and you can get it at this particular URL right here. And so I would like to um, use the time that we have left for some questions conversation, but I also wanted to say that if you do have a massive data set that you want to look at and um, you don't want to touch the overpass API and destroy it, <laughs> Then looking at um, planet um, openstreetmap.org and the whole data set that's there and different ways of working with that. There is um, a hosting instance of it on the Amazon Web Services now. And I just wanted to put in a little plug for the Map Time Mile High Group on January 19th. If you want to um, learn how to query change sets with Amazon Athena, we're going to have a great conversation about that.